kid, you always want to be like your dad, especially him playing overseas. I was calling him like, man, can I go out there with you next time? At that time, I just wanted to be around him and basketball was something that we connected with and we both love. So I feel like I'm gonna I'm a pick it up and run with it. We could have a lot of conversation. We mad at each other. We could talk about basketball and our, have a laugh out of it. Oh, uh, Drew Lee helped me develop as a man uh, because you there with all different type of games. You there, you, you'll see your enemy there. The Drew Lee made it a family. Drew Lee made it a family. And I can honestly say Dino was a father to a lot of us young men coming up because uh, without him, man, we don't know who we'd be. And I'm just talking about a lot of people who was able to walk in them doors and the Drew Lee could be saving them at that time. It's just make you closer, make you one big family. So Julie just show you it's like another family. I grew up in the Jordan Down Projects. At three years old, me and my little brother was walking and my mother was murdered right here in the same projects that we that I was raised in. And seeing that, it was like a lot of mental. Basketball put the ball in my hand, that saved me. But the motivation and hard work came from the tragedy I had growing up when I was three years old. Basketball, it's just basketball, man. It was just the mental of the game and the stress of the game. It, 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 basketball took the stress away from me. That was my comfort zone. And uh, that's how it got me, got away from all this stuff. And that's how I was able to go to college, through basketball. Basketball is our happiness. You come in here, have a disagreement, I call him, you wanna go work out? Yeah, meet me at Jordan. My granny was a big, uh, big influence in my life, man. You know, she was everything. She was, she, she was everything, like she was, she raised me on her own. Everybody in my house was mandatory to graduate from high school. I was mandatory to graduate from college. She held me to a bigger standard. So appreciate her for doing that. And uh, I really didn't have no therapy. You know, the therapy was uh, my granny, man. She was, she, she was the most important thing to, about, you know, making sure we were straight. Uh, she, she, uh, she, she didn't understand what the hurt was at first. She, you know, she used to tell us that. Me and my brothers, she used to tell us, I don't understand the hurt. But the mental part of it, uh, it's just, I wanted to get, I wanted to get out of here after, after seeing what I was going through, you know. Growing up as a student athlete, people, people think athletes don't really take school serious. Athlete first, student second. Him and my mom, they, uh, they told me it was student first, athlete second. I used to miss tournaments if I messed up in school. I used to be mad. I had to uh, hear my friends talk about the games from, uh, from home. He was present. That's all I could have asked for. You know, growing up, some of my friends, are, they didn't have that father figure in their life. So I didn't take it for granted that mine was here. Any, any time I needed him, he, He'd rush to me no matter what it is, big or small, he was there. Um, so our relationship over the years, as I matured and got older, it got it got better. We were able to just talk, um, be real with each other. That's one thing I can't say about him, he real with me. If anybody gonna tell me the real, it's gonna be him. Everybody else will try to sugarcoat it, but he gonna tell me what it, what it needs to be, he gonna tell me what I need to hear, and the stuff that I don't wanna hear sometimes, but I, I go with it and, and listen to it, cause you need people like that in your life. Just being there, being accountable, being present. He know that any time I call that I'm gonna be there regardless of anything. So accountability is the biggest thing about being with him, being here, being present. You have to be present. So me by me being present and being there and showing leadership, I think that was the best thing, accountability. Kind of when I go through stuff, I come in here and work him, him and his brother out. 
whatever I'm going through, is, we, like, we not even worrying about it for them two, three hours when we in the gym. So basketball is a hilly, you know, the outlet for me to uh, burn some steam. Basketball, for sure. Um, any stress that I have, come in here, blow off some steam. That two, three hours of just forgetting about it, it, it helps me tremendously. Um, also talking to my parents or any one of my family members, it, it helps. Um, and praying, to be honest, when I, when I don't know, I just pray about it and, uh, and just, just think that God, God, God has a, a vision for me and I just have to stay faithful to that. And everything that I'm supposed to have, I will have no matter what. Basketball, that, that was one of my outlets. You know, now growing up now, my outlet they, they keep me going and fuel me now is the children. I like to help the community because I see them going through the same stuff that I went through. And um, I want to be the outlet like the ones who helped me. Last year was our first annual Tyrone uh, Raleigh Boys Camp. Free for Watch was a great turnout. We had about 70 kids here. Coaching, giving back to my community, coming back here working and coaching at my high school, my alma mater, I think that's that's one of the biggest things because a lot of kids be like, man, why you come back? I be telling them, y'all, y'all the reason why. People came back for me, that's the reason why I was taught. So if I don't come back, who gonna come back? So that's what I'm doing, man. I'm, I'm here to be a father to all of, to the next generation. We wanna invest in, into the kids um, of our community because they're the future. Mental health is uh, it's strong. When I was coming up, I didn't have nobody to talk to about it. Talking is key because I was stuck in the shadow, not knowing what, letting people know what I was going through because when you hold it in and, and you don't talk, communication is key. So I try to make sure that they communicate the right way and tell them that I went through it and you can make it. Because I, I went through it and I made it out. Just communicating my uh my mental health. Have to dream. You know, especially coming from where we at, man, you have to dream. And then we gotta give our youngsters, you know, that's what I'm doing. That's what I gave to him. I gave him something to dream about. You know, if you don't have a dream and you don't have a goal to what you're trying to be, we just gonna be here. So, you know, we got to we gotta give our youth something to dream about. We got to just keep dreaming about it and try to accomplish it.